Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. We're talking about tonight's WCTV football game of the week. It's a Thursday night edition, gentlemen. We have Summit Head Coach Brian Coleman here, Ravenwood Head Coach Will Hester here. Appreciate you gentlemen taking time out of your busy schedule. Especially on a game day like this. I know it is tough, but I do appreciate that. Yep. Very busy. Good. Very busy. So uh, let's talk about this, even though I think it's – Pretty easy to figure out, but uh, with, with with fall break coming up, uh, and I know the TSSAA at different times said you got to play Thursday. Was this one of those y'all decided? We decided. Yeah. I think Chad Kirby decided. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> Coach Kirby <laughs> heading to Cancun. It's or like, maybe. <laughs> Coach Kirby or the administration. It's kind of like homecoming. You know, we're just we're just here. <laughs> <laughs> we just coach the game. They yes. tell us when to be there. <laughs> so yeah. talk about that. Uh, you know, with the. With the referees, how many you got to play a Thursday every cup? What talk, talk about that deal? Yeah, that was only a week this time around. It's just a week ten deal, right? And supposedly, last year the odd classifications played on Thursday night, and the evens played Friday. And then this year it was supposed to be flipped, but people got permission to play on yeah, Friday anyway. We were so supposed to play Indy on Thursday. I, I think to change yeah. to Friday. because our referee association. Uh, well, definitely the one we use, has plenty of officials. We were granted that permission. You know, there are other ones throughout the state where I think it's a little more. Did J.D. Markham put a good word in for you, Coach Hester? <laughs> He's your boy. The cat diver. <laughs> that is his email address. He is your boy. I don't even know what it means. So in flag football, obviously Coach Hester got all the calls when he was. Of course. Coach Hester gets all the calls, period. <laughs> everybody clearly, loves, everybody clearly y'all watched the everybody film. That is Coach not Hester. the case. All right, gentlemen, let's jump in. Region 6-6A, game three in the region for both of you. We're on sort of the back half of the schedule here. Uh, Coach Hester, first time on the show this year, so we appreciate you being here. Coach Coleman, second time in, so he's an old pro this year. Let me ask you this for both of you. We'll start with Coach Coleman. You're six games in. I always thought, and I know football's different, but I always thought in uh, basketball, you know, it's kind of you tried – to play different people, different style, and obviously injuries have something to do with it, so forget the injuries. When you get to week six or seven, is that where you kind of really know, okay, this is who we are if we don't have injuries? At what point do you say, this is what we're trying to do, and you're not doing the testing anymore, you so need to, to get it. Yeah, by that time, you need to have it figured out, I'd say. Now, where it's a different case for us this year, so, I mean, we're trying to figure out what we can do as far as personnel goes because we're going to be really young. So well, that's good. That's a good thing. We've got to uh, – inexperience is kind of bad, but these young guys are getting a chance to play. Yeah. Coach Hester, what about for your team? Is it – by the time we play a region game, do you know coming out of camp, is it based on how – what kind of veterans you have? What's that like typically? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, especially with our team this year, right, 90% of these guys played significant minutes last year. So we kind of knew what we thought our identity was going in. I mean, it's kind of been that. Then you look at, hey, you know, at this point for us, right, you know, I think mathematically we have already got into the playoffs, right? So now we've got to look at what gives us the best chance to advance in the playoffs. And what is that what we're doing now? Is that something we're going to have to change? How, are we going to have to have a metamorphosis? And then you're one play away from all that being thrown in the garbage. You know, the wrong person go down that you've built everything around, right? Uh, and then now you're you're scrambling to just you know get first downs and do whatever you can do. So uh, you know it's difficult, just like in any other sport. Though I mean it's a team game, right? And everybody kind of has that person that makes the deal go. And when they were to get banged up or whatever, it changes the whole dynamic of the thing. So uh, you know I think you're always kind of having a metamorphosis, if you will. Coach, I saw on Twitter this past X or whatever it was Miami Hurricanes defense coordinator. He's an ex-high school coach. He said he learned so much coaching high school because, number one, you're going to see different kind of offenses every week. You're going to see a wing tee spread. You're going to see so many things every week. And personnel. He said you got to adapt to your personnel. So, it's I mean, you look at a high level like that and a guy saying he learned a lot in high school football, you know, coaching high school football. I mean, that's we've got to adapt <laughs> a lot, a lot. And we see a lot of things weekly as far as offenses go. You know, something I've always thought that's pretty interesting about your sport, and it's, I guess it's the physical nature of it, you know, you take a basketball or baseball or one of those sports, it doesn't really happen. But for you guys, during the year, you may have a dude, 
but he primarily plays offense. But when the when the playoffs start, they may be playing both sides. That, that seems like that happens a lot with y'all, Coach Coleman, talking about football. Yeah, we have to. Uh, yeah. I mean, you want your best 11 on the field. You might not be able to do it early in the season because they're not in game-type shape. But, I mean, as it gets further on for a long, you want your best 11 and – some guys have to play both ways with that, to get that brand out there. Coach Hester, do you have guys like that you're already sort of thinking about that, that, hey, when it really gets time, you know, I think about your quarterbacks. You're obviously playing them both, but is there going to be a situation where you really try to get them more reps because those are both dudes? Yeah, I mean, can't you know, be a quarterback obviously at the same time. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, ten would be a heck of a middle linebacker. I'd take him, <laughs> or corner, or safety, <laughs> or receiver, or running back. I mean, he could kind of do a little bit of everything. But yeah, I mean, and we're already working those. Tuesday's what we call our crossover day, right? So we basically have three work days in a week: Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thursday usually is a is a walk through type situation. So we've got like eight guys in our program right now that we train both ways, right, and train in other positions. Uh, and everybody else is kind of playing uh, on one side of the ball or the other. So we do that on Tuesdays, uh, and they may it may be some of them just now starting to get those opportunities, like Brian said. You know, whether it be heat or all the things, right, or longevity, you want to get have them for as long as you can have them. Uh, you want to limit some of those reps early in the season. Uh, but, you know, it's it's about time now, you know, to start figuring out what your best group is at any given time. Coach Cohen, I know we talked about this a little bit off air, at least, um, last time you were here. But I want you both to answer this, starting with Coach Coleman. Talk about how you handle fall break. So you guys are playing Thursday mm -hmm. instead of traditional Friday, tonight being that Thursday night game. So now what do you do with Friday? You go into a break. What are you doing for your team? you got a huge game coming back against yes, Overton. Sir. Let's face it, you win that one, kind of gives you the inside track of making the playoffs. We are giving them off Friday, but then we're coming in Monday and Tuesday in practice. So we're, we're not going to give them the whole fall break off, but a little bit of it. Is that pretty typical of what you do? That's what we've always done. And I've kind of fed off, you know, other coaches in Williamson County. And I, I, I don't know if you just, but, but I just feel like, you know, a week's a long time. So, I mean, they can still go on vacation Tuesday after go practice Tuesday morning. They can still go on vacation Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's a pretty good vacation. So, I mean, Monday, Tuesday, we need to, especially at the point we're at right now. What about your team, Coach Astor? Similar? Exactly the same. So, uh, We'll give them Friday off, so they'll kind of get a three-day weekend on the front end, right? And then we'll bring them in, you know, with the ability now with asynchronous uh, teacher conferences and that kind of stuff. You know, we're, we'll go mornings both Monday and Tuesday uh, and allows them, you know, we tell them, hey, we will have them done at, you know, for this year for us, it's 11 a.m. on Tuesday. You know, if you're flying to wherever, <laughs> you know, book the flight for 1 o'clock or 2, you know what I mean? So, and we tell them in March. Uh, I know Coach Stidham is, is the same way, but then we have some of our, um, you know, cohorts that give them the whole week off. So it's it's kind of whatever fits your program or whatever fits you. Uh, you know, we do a good job. You know, freshman season ended for us on Monday, right? That was our last freshman game. So I think it would be more difficult if you're trying to manage, you know, playing freshman games and stuff after the break as well because, you know, how do you handle practice with those guys because they're – you know, our kids could stay home and meet their parents if their parents really wanted to leave. You know what I mean? Whereas a freshman kid who's dependent for rides and all that kind of stuff, it would be a little bit different. So um, I, I really like the groove we've got in with the schedule with the freshman being I, I feel like this is such a unique Williamson County conversation. Let me ask you guys this, because y'all both coached out of the county. Did you get – do you remember, did you get guys get weeks off? And no. you're, at Forest, did y'all get a week off for fall break? Do you no. remember? No, and they – Usually didn't go on vacation either. Yeah. I mean, they'd so, go in the fields or something. I don't so know. So fall break looked a little bit different little bit because different, yeah. and maybe didn't happen. Did y'all get a week off in Alabama, Coach? You remember? Uh, I don't think we did. I think it was like a Friday, Monday, or something like that. Yeah. You know, like a four day situation. So, and you know, definitely didn't have a league where you could make sure that it was matched up with your bye week because everybody was in the same ca right. calendar. Yeah, so that it's, it's, I think it's fascinating when and you like look at Coach it. And like Coach says, we give them a heads up. We're telling parents, yeah. I'm telling them now for next year. Yeah. Well, this I, is the way we do you it. You still get an email, though, yes. inevitably. Yes. I cannot believe <laughs> your practice on fall break. Well, I, I told you in March. Calendar's posted. It's in printed out. You have your parent meeting. Look, we are practicing two days this week. We so. have scheduled a trip. Yeah, okay. Coach Hester, we love her. You, you may not have – you don't have to answer this. 
but I'm just going to throw this out and just assuming this happens. The more prominent you are on the depth chart, the more likely you follow and remember and yeah, it's kind of an age thing, too. You know, them JV guys, oh, yeah, they, they got their toes in the age. sand a couple of days early. You know what I mean? Go one ahead, time, go. I think it was Ty Carter missed one day, and we sat him for like the first quarter, and everybody's like, oh, he's okay. All right. Scott That's sat old. quarterback, though. Last year. So <laughs> sometimes you got to prove your point. Yeah, well, you got to. It's like that parent saying, I'm going to spank you, I'm going right. to spank you. It never does it. That kid knows. <laughs> So you probably have guys still talking about it. Man, there was this guy named Tyler Carter. Do you remember? He, he sat he's out of He's not scared to. <laughs> worked out for you, worked out Coach for Tyler, too. Coach is too nice, though. He doesn't do things like that. Just all love. <laughs> hey, let's talk a little game history here. Overall series, Ravenwood 4-2. You played once in the playoffs. That was a win in the quarterfinals for Summit a couple years ago, 48-28. Uh, in fact, I thought it was kind of interesting. I look back at those games. Not to bring up a bad memory, Coach Hester. It's fine. You played twice that year, and the score was 49-28 and 48-20. It's almost identical score. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I and tended still, you and you and your cohort picked Ravenwood both times. I don't think you I did. You asked about it. I don't, I don't think I did. <laughs> well, you should have asked me. I'd have told you to pick. Yeah, heck yeah I was a rat poison back I don't, in the day. I don't, I don't think I picked against you. I really don't. <laughs> so, uh, it's interesting. This is very games. similar to when you were – we talked with Brentwood. So, Coach Coleman, you coached in five of these games, two and three. Coach Hester's coached in all of them, four and two. But even though you've been different size, anytime you've played, you've been in the same league because it goes back to the old Z plan, Coach yeah. Hester. We talked about that with Coach Coleman last time. But all the good old days. Yeah, not, not trying to bring up a bad <laughs> memory, but – It went bad for Ravenwood. <laughs> and why – because – Yo, That was what we, we – Oh, met. that was in the heyday. Yeah. Not that you're not, you not – Not that we don't remember that. Not that you hadn't been in the heyday a lot, but Coach Coleman, he has a little uh, thought back. Is that you just trying I to get – I told them we had the freshman cover Van Jefferson. <laughs> that was – Worked the, out great. <laughs> <laughs> For you, yeah. Back up and hope he makes a bad pass. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of interesting that every time – and I know it It would always feel this way because it's – That freshman may have been Ty Carter. It was Ty Carter <laughs> to bring him up again. It was Ty Carter. <laughs> he didn't – he didn't sit out that game. No, uh, no. And look, look what happened to him. He learned, faced a little adversity that one night and turned it to a He stud. did. He did. He did. <laughs> so the games have always mattered when you play. It would anyway because it's WCS, but it's always been a league game, Coach Coleman. Yep. So would you – Because Coach Hester wouldn't play us non-reason then. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. I don't believe I was there, actually. <laughs> I, I was at another school that did play yeah. you and got the, our brains beat in. Was so. that Nolensville? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, maybe you can get no one's to play. I'd love for no one's to play. Let me show you the text. <laughs> Listen, Coach Derek may watch this show. He may be. He knows what he texts. <laughs> yeah, everybody's already scrambling trying to get uh, games for next year. No doubt about it. Already. Uh, any conversation? I know you, you probably didn't know looking ahead. Because, uh, listen, I think it's fair to think about, you know, what kind of team we're going to have for the next two years. I think that's a fair thought when you're coming up with scheduling. My question to you, Coach Hester, did you and Coach Rathbone ever talk about potentially playing? Because I think a lot of people agree that'd be a heck of a game. Yeah, we 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 uh, there's a conversation out there, you know. It's, oh, for uh, going forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have talked, and it's a possibility. Uh, so we're just you know waiting to kind of get something a little more concrete. But let me ask you this, Coach Coleman, because even it's not like you and Indy, but. To me, the game with Spring Hills kind of one because you're both that's out one. there. Yeah. Is that one that you guys will try that's to keep one we're playing? Keeping, yeah, that's one yeah. we keep. Yeah. It's, yeah, I think that's a good deal. And my phone probably ringing right now. People are trying to call us to play us. <laughs> hey, they weren't calling a couple years ago. No, they weren't, but now they are. So <laughs> we've got to get it back on track. So listen, you got to know how people feel and go, okay, I remember I was trying to get games. And I was telling Coach uh, Coleman, I uh, obviously had a great team during the COVID time. I could predict it every week. Like, well, whoever they're playing is going to say, well, we got too many COVID people sick. We got too many people sick and we can't play. Man. <laughs> they had it. All the good old days. The, yeah. mas <laughs> the masks, the social di oh, man. social distancing. First year as AD, I was like, listen, can anything happen to get you more prepared to be Oh, that was AD? your first time. Oh, Halfway through, I'm like, I've got this down pat. And then March, <laughs> boom, it's when it happens. Remember, guys, we were talking about doing the uh, – you know, the Wilco workout we just started a couple of years ago, but if you guys remember, we were having that conversation that spring. No, I don't remember. I was not. You around. don't? Oh, that's right. You weren't. 
But Coach Cohen, you remember yeah. that. Coach yeah. Blade was still here. We were like, let's do it. And then in March, mm. it just ended. No one's real girls basketball. I feel still terrible for them. I think they could have won it. All right, last week's games. Let's talk a little bit. Coach Hester, Ravenwood, 37, independent, zero. Now, the first half, only nine, nothing. Yeah. Weather, impact? Uh, wind, maybe. Uh, I don't think the rain impacted either team. Uh, but the wind was definitely a factor in the kicking game and the passing game, for sure. You know, I give it up to Coach Stidham. I mean, they've struggled this year, obviously, but it's not like they're going to lay down. No, no. You know, they're going to come out I mean, and play and do their you thing. Know, I think Scott does a wonderful job. I think his kids play hard. I think they're super prepared. I mean, uh, you know, they came out swinging. You know what I mean? I mean, they were ready to play. They were fired up and, uh, you know, punched us in the mouth a little bit early and uh, allowed us to have a conversation at halftime that we haven't had all year. So, I mean, it was a – uh, an opportunity for a coachable moment for the Raptors. And so uh, – A fly on the wall. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have been a fly on the wall to hear that yeah. one? What did so, you say? You I told, told him, him I loved him in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're here during fall break. Uh, 37 yards rushing you gave up, and no, they only passed the ball one time, so I thought that was pretty impressive. Uh, Jalen Pollard, 79-yard scoop and score. Pace and Dallin doing their thing at running back. But here's something I've noticed. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. Early in the year, Coach Hester, you talked about, listen, we're winning, but too many penalties, we're turning it over. feel like that's starting to shape up the way you want it to. I mean, we didn't turn the ball over in those weather conditions. You know, that could have been. Uh, we still had some, some, you know, egregious bonehead penalties, like, you know, like false starting. I mean, that's just a lack of concentration. There's no reason to false start, you know what I mean? Uh, so, I mean, we had a couple of those that made things messy and that kind of stuff. So, uh, but, yeah, I mean, in the end, I mean, when you had, I think we had two penalties or something against Alcoa. You know what I mean? So, we started out fine and executed at a high level. So, you know, we had a lull in there for whatever reason where we were getting penalties and now it's kind of even back out. But the turnovers are things that you can't have. You can survive penalties uh, as long as they're not, you know, 15 yarders or whatever. But uh, you can't turn the ball over, and I'm glad we we did not do that Friday. So, Coach uh, Coleman, you guys go to Franklin. Uh, they take care of business 38-7. You play Thursday night. Talk about that conversation that you guys had. Now, this is their home game. It's their home game. What, what, really what, their choice. What were your thoughts of about that going in? Do you think, hey, maybe that mess, makes the game messy? Maybe that ends up being good for us. A messy game would have been fine with us, but it was, it was their call ultimately, so they called about – Wednesday at lunch and let us know that that's what they wanted to do. So, you know, we're scrambling to change our practice schedule on because we thought we had the two days. So we had to combine our Wednesday, Thursday practice together, you know, but it's, it is what it is. It's fine. And Coach Hester talks about turnovers. We had a turnover the first offensive play of the game. So that's just things that we can't do if we expect to win a football game. When I looked at your team and, it, you know, I look at that drive you had in the second quarter yeah. uh, with Michael Haney, good to have him playing for you. A rushing touchdown after a 10-play, 79-yard drive. You need more of those kind of drives. Uh, 100%. We need that kind of drive. But we're shooting ourselves in the foot with dumb penalties or, or lost yardage plays, and you just can't have that It would the way our offense is going right now. So, uh, you know, we love those kind of drives. That's what kind of identity we want to be, you know, and hopefully we can get to that. You know, with your team, and again, uh, you know, it is what it is, especially in your sport. Had a tough time with injuries. When you start talking about your team and, you know, who offensively has been there and doing yeah. – we talk about an offensive lineman, Ian McCarthy, which is good, but usually you're talking about offense. You're talking about some of your skilled people. You've had some folks out. Wyatt Grambling's had to step in and quarterback. So, still trying to piece this thing together. Still trying to piece it together. And, you know, some guys are returning, you know, but sometimes they're not 100%. So, I mean, you just got to deal with that. And then – it's just tough. I mean, when you're beat up, it's tough. I mean, a kid don't practice all week, you know, but he's been a starter. So, you know, how do you gauge that? I mean, yes, they need the reps in practice, but also they're they're a good football player. So, I mean, because you don't want to beat them up for practice and get them hurt worse. But it's just a lot of things you need to need to juggle. <clears throat> Let's talk about your region a little bit. Coach Hester, I'll start with you. Uh, obviously, great league. This is – everybody knows what kind of league this is. we got two teams ranked in the top ten. In any poll you look at, that's yourself. That's Brentwood High School. But you've also scheduled tough outside the league as well, which should even help you more as you head towards playoffs. Well, I mean, you kind of think that. You know, I mean, then Kane Ridge is a team who's played for state championships within the last six or seven years. You know, probably 
not probably, one of the worst Cane Ridge teams, you know, that they've had in a long time. Smyrna, you know, predominantly strong team, not having their very best year, you know what I mean? So you think that going in, and then it, it ends up, you know, you out of no fault of your own that, you know, maybe it's not, right? So, but uh, obviously, uh, Alcoa was a test for us, and and uh, Blackman was a very, is a very good football team, took Oakland to the to the end. So I, I, those games were difficult and, and prepared us uh, for these games down the stretch run of the season here. Uh, but, you know, probably not as tough as we would have wanted the schedule to be. Now we end up, you know, non-region, we got to go play Oakland here uh, at the end of the season. And uh, so you hope that those tests will prepare you uh, for what you have to come after that. And Coach Coleman, we talked about this a little bit before we got on air. You look at what you've got after fall break. You got Overton, Overton no Owensville, no which Indy. that one doesn't really matter. And then Indy. So with your team, and I think it's a testament to your guys, you've got some dudes trying to play, and yeah. really they need to wait because when it gets down to you take care of two of those last three, which let's face it, you're going to have a shot in those games. Yes, sir. You still can make the playoffs. Yes, that's that's – yes. The season's not over. I mean, we were – Four or five games in, even when we started playing our region, we were four games in. I think it, the season just then kind of started. So you just want that extra game. You just want to get in the playoffs to see what happens. But you got to fight to get in the playoffs. And like you said, we've got kids that are, you know, they're doing everything that they need to do to get back. And some of them aren't 100 percent, and they're still wanting to play. So you know, that's a testament to them and 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 the program. I think so. Uh, just glad that those guys are trying to come back. You know, I think it's interesting, too, I've always loved about football is because there's only 10 guaranteed, those are events. It's almost like they're, they're games, but it's it's like an event for the whole school. It's like these five we get to play at home mm -hmm. and five on the road. To me, that's that's part of what, what makes football special, Coach Coleman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, our, and our student sections are awesome. I mean, everywhere in Williamson County has a great student section, and some is no different. But uh, – and it's just it's a fun environment. I mean, people, you know, I have people come out of town and watch the game. And they're they're really you know eye opening experience for them. It's just a high school football. Now it's not Texas, you know, but it's 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 good high school football. And Coach Hester, do you know? Maybe you do know this. I feel like I brought this up last time you guys were on the show. My first year as AD, uh, Coach Coleman said some things to me, like you said at halftime uh, last week, because I think I was in the wrong spot. We got a warning from the side. <laughs> Official gave a warning, and I was in the wrong yeah, spot. Some, he turned some around. Some guy on my coaching staff is in the box. It's actually me. Coach, you going to get a flag for this guy over here. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know this guy. I'm looking around going, oh, okay, I guess I'm in the wrong. I coach basketball. We can get on the floor a little bit. Well, so now I'm you not... can walk all the way down to the basement. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Coach Hester, with your schedule, uh, still got Brentwood and Franklin left too, so those are teams that are really playing well right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean – uh, you got Brentwood Franklin playing Friday. I think that'll be a great game to watch and kind of see how that sorts out. And because uh, both of those teams are playing at a high level right now, and then uh, so we go into fall break and have Franklin, then Oakland, then Brentwood. So uh, definitely uh, a lot of hay left to put in the barn. Now, listen, I'm not saying it's not possible uh, you wouldn't match up again. So I'm gonna put Coach Coleman on the spot here. Brentwood Franklin, you've already played them both. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think that goes on Friday night? It'll be a tough game. I mean. Franklin is very athletic. They've got tall wide receivers. You know, the quarterback's good. He, 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 he's a really good – he throws the ball well in spots. So, uh, the running back is good. I mean, and Brentwood's always solid. Their defense is solid. Good tackling secondary as always. Uh, number, their, you know, outside linebackers are pretty tough. So, I mean, it's going to be a I, – I couldn't predict that one at all. Now, I know Coach Hester is picking Brentwood because he's got this great love for Brentwood since he's a Brentwood high graduate. <laughs> So he's, I mean, forget the Ravenwood, Brentwood thing. So I know you. Why are you even asking me? <laughs> hey, you know, you talk about Franklin. I know you got to, you'll have to get ready for them pretty soon. But, uh, you know, you talk about those wide receivers. I mean, this is not a Franklin show, but I thought it was kind of interesting that you look at Wilson throws three touchdowns, three different guys. Mm -hmm. He throws four touchdowns, four different but, guys. But let's he not get it twisted. Those are the same guys that have played for three right, straight right. years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those guys were good as sophomores. They were better as juniors, and now they're playing. And I'll even go one step further. That freshman group, when they were freshmen, uh, I think they were undefeated until maybe our freshman group yeah. played them in the last game of the season. So they've been good for four straight years, this group. 
Yeah. And it's a good group of football players. Well, and it's kind of – and I know it's one of the things that's so frustrating, Coach Coleman, about what's happened to you guys with injuries. It's kind of what you guys were doing. Y'all were building. We're trying to build up yeah, again. Yeah. And then – Kind of just start over again. And then you get some some bad breaks Because, Coach, injuries. they played a lot of sophomores last year, and now they're reaping the rewards. So we were kind of hoping that that was going to happen. So now we're hoping, you know, get through this year, you know, and then, and then next year we've got a lot of experience coming back. Which makes a so big difference yes. in any sport. Yes. All right, let's talk a, bit, a little bit more about your team specifically. Coach Hester, uh, I thought this was pretty interesting. I heard you say it earlier. You know, people have thoughts about you really need to play one quarter. And like, no, no, no. We've got two quarterbacks, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to run the offense the same. May do it a little different based on their skill set when they have to make some decisions out there. That's the way it's going to be from here on out. Uh, Femi Babalola, I'm one of the only people that can say his last name correct, besides his mother and you, and Maverick Chance. So you got a couple good QBs there, Coach. Yeah, we do, and and we've known, right? I mean, they've been good as they've come along. And, you know, these guys, what's funny is they've done this since they were 9 and 10 years old in peewee football, right? So they, they've they kind of been on the same teams and, and share the spotlight there. You know, the positive for me is in this day and age of kids and, you know, some of them being entitled and all that. The fact that we have a situation where two kids will root for each other and be there for each other, want each other to succeed, I think that's what's special about this situation is, you know, you don't have one of them hoping the other one gets hurt so he can play more and all that. They both want to play and they both want to help this team be successful. Uh, and I think that, you know, that's a big part of why it works is because they care for each other and they want each other to succeed. If it was one way or the other, uh, I think that, you know, it wouldn't go as well. So we just, we think we have two starting quarterbacks. We think we have two kids that both have a chance to be college football players as a quarterback. Uh, it looks different, right? I mean, you know, uh, uh, Femi got offered by Boston College recently, and I was talking to their quarterback coach, and they were talk, we were t at the conversation went to Maverick, and I said he may be the best quarterback to ever play at the Naval Academy. You know what I mean? It, it could be that kind of deal. You know what I mean? So uh, both of those guys are very good football players, and we're blessed to have them and, and both of them playing well. Coach Coleman, you've played too. And, again, Grambling, who just came in, mm -hmm. he's new, he's senior, but he's doing the best he can do. But let's face it. For you to be the best you can be, you need it to be McElhaney. Do, we do. And Mason, you know, going into the year, he was the starter and knows the offense better. And Wyatt came in late and, you know, we had to limit his, you know, limit what we put in the playbook for him. So, you know, the, as weeks progress, he's getting more and more information and learning more and more of the offense. Let's talk a little defense. Coach Hester, uh, defense has been pretty special. Five and a half points a game. You're giving up three shutouts. And, again, I would say against a pretty stout schedule there too. Yeah, I mean, clearly our defense is carrying our football team. It, I, I think that the best teams are the best defensive teams. You know, I mean, I think offense can do a lot of things, right? Uh, but in the end, if you run into a stellar defense, they're going to hold an offense down. Uh, I think, you know, great football, championship-level football is playing great defense. And uh, I think this is one of the better ones we've had. I mean, I'll go back, you know, into the – Z plan years. I mean, this could rival any defense that we've had at Ravenwood in my time frame. Uh, and they're super smart. You know, they care for each other. They're connected. They pick each other up. And, uh, you know, Coach Collier's done a great job of, of breeding into them about taking the football away. I think, uh, you know, we're averaging three take a, takeaways a game right now on that side of the ball. And, uh, you know, it, we've scored a defensive touchdown in, in five of the six games so far. So, uh, you know, just proud of the way that they're playing. Coach, you talk about your defense. We were talking about the job that Coach Taylor's doing for you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, again, got to piece some things together. Uh, but you look at your schedule, I mean, your defense has been big time tested by some really good yeah, offenses. We had a brutal schedule. I mean, it, it's fine. Uh, but, yeah, they're keeping <laughs> us in games. <laughs> I'm here to bring uh, up bad memories, fellas. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're fighting their tails off, uh, you know. So, coming to practice every week, and they, you know, it's, it's a week-by-week, -week, play play-by-play type situation right now for us. Coach Hester, let's finish up just talking about tonight's game and really moving forward, too. Give me some keys for tonight, but also as you're heading towards the finishing up the season here after fall break. I mean, it's, it's the same every week, right? It's blocking and tackling. You know, it's taking care of the football. And then in the end, you, you know, you got to stay healthy and have a little luck. I mean, that's how it all goes, right? 
uh, not turning the ball over is a non-negotiable and, and trying to have your best players on the field in the biggest moments, uh, you know, healthy enough to compete. I mean, that's what it's all about. How about for your squad, Coach Coleman? Same thing. I mean, he's talking about, you know, how many takeaways his defense has and they're a successful football team. So, you know, you've got to protect the football. Uh, you can't have negative plays. You can't have the silly turn or the silly uh, penalties. You've got, we have, as an offense, have to stay in front of the sticks. You know, we, we're not really great at a second and 20 or a first and 15. So, you know, don't put, your, don't put ourselves in that situation. Protect the football, you know, play each play and try to have some long drives and keep their offense off the field. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you being here. I know it's a short week and looking forward to tonight's game. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.